Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. We are here. We're up and running. I am so excited to bring you the first in a series of interviews uh, it, with me, Jason Langstorff. I run Learn with Jason in partnership with Free Code Camp. Thank you so much for letting us take over the channel. And I am just absolutely thrilled to be talking to one of my favorite people today, Henri Elvetica. How you doing, man? Honestly, I'm probably more thrilled to be here uh, after that little bit of hiccup. Uh, for everyone uh, just watching, uh, apologies, we're a little tardy. It's all on me. Uh, my <laughs> computer was just acting weird. And uh, you know what I just discovered today is that uh, the Touch ID is actually a button as well. So I was sitting there touching it, touching it, touching it. Oh, no. and, I'm like, and then I, I was getting so mad that I was like, wait, this just went down. I'm like, oh, man, I didn't know this. Oh, so, no. Uh, regardless, thanks for having me, dude. Uh, I think it's a, it's an honor for you to first have reached out to me and uh, finding out that I'm, I'm the first person uh, uh, sort of like launching uh, this set of uh, interviews. So uh, I'm just I beyond delighted. I mean, I'll go a step further than that, man. I, I actually will say that you are the person who kind of inspired the whole idea for this. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about why here when we get into it. But so what I what I really want to do is I, I just want to say, um, you know, the, the idea behind this whole series and the reason that we're doing it is that getting into tech can be really daunting, right? It can be um, it can feel like this endless climb, like you, you're you just kind of rolling this rock up the hill and you never know when it's going to stop. And what I what I'm hoping to do is to to help encourage people and and um, kind of show that, like, even if you haven't been working in tech, you're still actively building skills that are going to help you in your career that are going to help you uh, move forward. So where I want to start with that is is let's maybe start by talking a little bit about what you're doing now. So do you want to maybe share a little bit of what what does your career look like now? Certainly. Um... I mean, I, I've certainly not uh, reached, I'd say, the the sort of uh, zenith or apex of my career so far in tech, uh, but uh, I'm happy to share. Um, I mean, I'm what you would uh, regard as your sort of prototypical freelancer, uh, and uh, I probably take that freelancing uh, a step further uh, in a sense that I may have my hands in a bunch of different things, uh, but that's also because I feel that I also have a set of skills that sort of um, uh, allow me to do so, uh, mm -hmm. essentially. So uh, I came from a design firm, you know, classic, uh, you know, you know, being on the dev team, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then I discovered, uh, I mean, sort of the inner layers of the the, the tech the tech scene. And yeah. uh, I saw, you know, the, the conferencing and I saw the ability to do like some, some tech writing and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, this is actually kind of interesting. And um, having done freelancing uh, quite often, uh, uh, man, sorry, my notifications are going crazy. <laughs> They're making all this noise. But uh, having done freelancing in a bunch of uh, uh, in prior careers, uh, I was very much used to it, you know. Uh, and uh, so it was no, you know, uh, it wasn't complicated to really transition to a, a freelance environment. Yeah. So uh, uh, after that, I just, you know, even you know, discovering the opportunity to be an organizer, you know, something yeah. that I'd done previously as well, uh, it, which is absolutely part of the fold uh, for me now anyhow. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like the freelance title uh, tends to be a little boring, you know, uh, but, uh, you know, when I sit down and w with people and let them know what I do specifically, what I enjoy doing specifically, uh, then, you know, I start to have this sort of like multi multifaceted, uh, many hats type of, uh, sure. kind of, uh, title. Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually, so that's something that I think is really interesting about your career in particular is that you are a, a many hats kind of developer. Cause you work, you do contract and client work. Um, you organize the Jamstack Toronto meetup. You're a keynote speaker. You, uh, you make like swag you've got the the, the hip-hop <laughs> pins which i have i have some of those sitting around here actually. oh man i, I may have oh, some no, where did they go i i have but you've got like the lo cool js and the notorious big data and like all these amazing these amazing pins um and so you're you're kind of across the board and what i love about it is that you you have done something that i think is is really interesting in your career which is that you haven't allowed what you do to box you in 
to a certain set of roles or responsibilities. And I, I think that's really inspiring. And that's that's kind of what I was thinking about when we started talking about this show. So specifically, um, what I'd love to talk about a little bit is you don't have a traditional tech background. Like you didn't come in through a computer science college program or, or anything like that. So what were you doing before tech? So, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's absolutely true. I did not come from, you know, anything CS related. Uh, I was always curious about, you know, CS or computers in general. You know, I, I fiddled around as a young man, uh, younger man, cause I am still a young man, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, uh, let me see. I started, I'd say, I mean, ultimately I came from music, you know, if I really, uh, go digging pretty deep, um, you know, in college, uh, I did, I remember doing uh, college radio, you know, and I had my own mm-hmm. little show, whatever. And um, I also had like a part-time job. And I say college, college slash university. Uh, but I also had a part-time job at a uh, a record chain. And uh, yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. And uh, that led ultimately to working at a label. And uh, as you may or may not remember, because I know, I'm sure you do remember, but, you know, we've talked about our, our sort of parallel past mm-hmm. and whatnot in music. But uh, you tend to be around that sort of traffic where, you know, label execs come in, you know, reps, uh, you know, they have, you know, swag or whatever, promos. And that sort of brought me into the business side of music, which I loved. Uh, I may not love as much as I did back then, mm-hmm. but um, I absolutely love the the sort of uh, the marketing, uh, the the development of careers, the development of acts, uh, and stuff like that. So that really enabled me to you know do so many things, um, you know, being in touch with you know groups of people all the time, uh, you know people you don't know necessarily but you know you 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 get to know eventually and you know creating a, creating a network of people across sometimes a country if sure. not a, a continent you know and these were you know things that we did in 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 music marketing you know right. sort of being able to pick up the phone or send an email to a particular you know retailer if not you know radio person and and talk about you know some of your your sort of priorities at the time. So I definitely did uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, a time in music. And mm-hmm. at some point uh, in parallel, I started to work in fashion as well because an opportunity came up and neither clashed with each other uh, on a scheduling level uh, and certainly not on a content level. Sure. Um, but uh, back then um, it was prior to what I saw happening after, which was uh, the sort of like meeting of two minds, the fusing mm-hmm. of those two uh, industries, you know, fashion and music suddenly uh, working well together, hand in hand. So Absolutely. An, and, and that was also another opportunity uh, that uh, I took I took on because that taught me a lot, you know, and I did a bit more of the sales thing there, but there was still heavy marketing going on. Uh, and like I said, the music was starting to fuse in with fashion. And I worked with a, a label, uh, a clothing label that was very forward on that level as well. So, yeah. So, so kind of talking about like, so you, you've worked in, in music, you've worked in fashion, mm-hmm. uh, you, you got into a design agency. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things that I've, I've noticed is like, just kind of from my own career, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of the skills that have helped me progress have been more on the the kind of social side. And, and you said something that I thought was really interesting, which was about building that global network, right? And so mm-hmm. I remember when I was in a band, one of the hardest parts of being in a band wasn't getting up on stage. It was convincing a group of 16-year-old kids in a city I'd never been to to go print out and hang up flyers for our show, right? Mm-hmm. So what kind of skills do you feel you developed in in fashion, in in music, that have that you use all the time that you maybe thought would not be particularly useful at the time. Oh, you know, great question. And you know, uh, I've actually thought about this prior, and uh, I, I, I mean, I've I've mentioned this to you, but you know, ultimately, I think I probably will make my way over to like a DevRel position mm-hmm. uh, in tech. But I tell people all the time, you know, when I sort of bring up the music bit that I felt like I was devreling in music 
mm-hmm. before I knew what the you know the, the the DevRel title, in a sense that you know you first you know you do a bit of a reconnaissance mission like okay I'm in this industry who do I need to know who do I need to talk to what do they what do they do uh, that is part of my you know potential a uh, potential work mandate right and so you know, you reach out to them, you know, cold emails sometimes, but often enough, it's like, you know, they know of your company. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh yeah, no doubt, you know, blah, 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 blah. You you get in touch and and you start that way. And, you know, that could be a national uh, situation, but it could easily be international. Right, right, right. And, and, you know, again, you know, like you said, as a, as a, someone who's in a band, you know, you know, you have like 10 tour dates and you have to set up these dates with, you know, uh, uh, you know, some marketing and some radio appearances. And, you know, so that means like, you know, you know, prior to Zooming, uh, you have to make that phone call. It's like, hey, X, Y and Z, I'm coming to town. Yeah. You know, w- you know can I do a, a, a 15 minute phoner? Right. You know? Well, and, and what you're and what you're talking about, like, really is that's a that's an overlap with project management. That's an overlap oh. with with like product minded thinking, because you can't just say like one of the things that I think it gets a lot of devs in trouble is they think that the only part of the job is the code. Um, mm. and, and because of that, they get a little bit stuck where they write code, but they're not thinking about how the code connects to the rest of the product of, to the rest of the company, to the people that are using it. And that kind of lets you, you plateau at a certain point where you can't really push beyond. And so what you're talking about with this, like, you know, it's not just, playing music it's not just doing the show there's all this stuff connected around it and so you had to develop all these skills of thinking big picture and thinking about how one part would connect to another part how you could support the work that you were doing on this on stage with different things um and i think that's that's just absolutely fascinating and, and such an interesting thing because who would have thought that being a show promoter would help help you become a better developer right absolutely and you know it's uh I mean, again, we've talked about this before. I, I've told you, like, uh, I I enjoy daydreaming. You know, um, I like to sit down and just sort of, you know, take an idea and start to develop it. You know, from mm-hmm. start to finish, uh, good ideas, poor ones, but you know, I jot them all down and I look for opportunities to, you know, take a product, whatever it is, and finding out how I can sort of develop it. Mm-hmm. So, for example. You know, in music, as you remember, it's like, okay, we'll get the advance. Okay, what does the music sound like? All right, cool. Who do I need to reach out to to sort of, you know, seed this music to? Uh, get some feedback. All right, cool. I got some feedback. Now I'm potentially going to go to radio with it. Boom, boom, boom. Here's my priority. Here's the product that I'm working with. You know, let me know what your community says once you put that out there. And then you take that feedback and, you know, it's pretty much the same with software. You know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you might deploy something, you're working on it, you have an alpha, you have a beta, boom, boom, you put it out to uh, a few people, get some feedback, what went wrong? Okay, cool, take it back. And then at some point you could put out, you know, 1.0. Right. Uh, and, yeah, it's, it's uh, that whole like 10 years to an overnight success thing, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so it certainly taught me how to think a lot. Um, I don't say how to think differently, but I do believe that, you know, having come from music and as you know, we have to be thrift, Mm -hmm. you know, we have to make, we have to, you know, take a dollar and stretch it like from here to who knows where, like I'm in (laughs) Toronto, I need to stretch this dollar to Vancouver and back, you know? Yeah, absolutely. it's uh, we, we tend to sort of really be, uh, you know, potentially a bit more enterprising than most. Right. Yeah. So um, and, and that actually kind of has me thinking about maybe some more more practical stuff. So for the, the people who are watching, a lot of folks are, are trying to break in. They're trying to get their first role. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the people who are in that position, you know, going back to how you made that transition when you when you were coming from from music and fashion over into tech, mm-hmm. what what did you do and like how did you how did you make yourself stand out from the other applicants how did you actually let's start there how did you make yourself stand out from other people as you were as you were trying to get that first gig so uh i mean even beyond the gig um i i'd like to to talk about this like sort of in general sure uh but um i've always said that uh you know 
there are a lot of people who are uh, equally skilled. You know, you're always going to find that there are some musicians who are just like, man, you know, he's a good guitarist, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he, his drums are, you know, whatever. But at some point, there's this is like little je ne sais quoi that makes you stand out. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, coming from the arts, uh, it could have been a bunch of things. Uh, but, you know, I made sure that, you know, I came with a bit of a different flair. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about like, you know, I got feathers coming out my hat or whatever, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I do want to make sure that, you know, you're going to remember me no matter what happens. Right. Um, so, you know, on the work level, you know, my first gig in dev uh, was, you know, I knew people, you know, and I knew uh, someone who had uh, mentioned that a particular company that they're working with were looking to fill in this role. And, you know, I was lucky enough to, uh, make it to the top of the pile of, of applicants. And, you know, I got through. Yeah. It's all good. Um, but, you know, to me, I, I've always mentioned this and it's, you know, what's going to make you interesting, you know? Uh, and this is something I talk about sometimes in these, is these lunch and learns that I do, you know, like, you know, you go out there and find your passion and, and sort of work at it. Right. And I'll be very frank in the sort of like, freelancer role and and sort of like this whole developer scene right now um i think a bunch of things happened um for what you know this may seem like you know uh, such a small thing uh and bizarre thing to mention but i was like how are you how are you not going to forget me and the yeah. first thing was like my my twitter handle uh and you know, I used to get asked so much if it was my real name. I was like, this is like, they're not forgetting me. You know, right. That's, that's right. Right. Sure. I mean, there's been discussion about it in the, in the chat today about your, oh, about Helvetica is your last name. There, there so that's, that's I mean, like a, a developer stage name, right? It, it's a known plume. Absolutely. You know, yeah. it's not my real name, but you know, people gravitated towards it so much that I was like, okay, when I went to conferences, I just asked them to, to use this as my, my, uh, my name. And, uh, you know, there are a couple of reasons beyond that I could get into, but you know, that was one. And, and two, what I also did was, uh, you know, when I was sort of, you know, a nobody and I'm just a bit less of a nobody right now, but, uh, <laughs> I'm still a bit of a nobody, but, you know, I remember just, uh, you know, the things I got into, I, I just start to read about and I st- start to tweet about it. Mm-hmm. And if I could, I'd, I'd, I'd sort of tag the, the author and be like, Hey, you know, I really love this quote. Boom. And, you know, I would just put that out there also to sort of help myself, but to really just build this, this rapport with the community to let them know, like, this is what I'm into. And, you know, if you go through my timeline, you're going to see a lot more of this. Um, I remember running into some authors later who told me they loved it. You know, they loved seeing someone reading about their work and quoting it to the rest of the world. Mm. And uh, I heard that from authors. I, I heard that from other developers who just started to follow me just on that basis. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that also meant that I was starting to deep dive in these areas that I was into as well. And so deep diving, sharing my passions, uh, making sure that people would remember me. Uh, and then, you know, things start to happen slowly thereafter. Yeah. It, well, and it seems like, I think a lot of people think that you have to know everything. Um, and, you know, I, I think that it, maybe a, a sign of, of growing in your career is realizing that there's just no way you're never going to know everything. Um, yep. but I think maybe the surprising thing is that you can, you can really specialize and there's a lot of work there. Like for example, you are a um, like an image performance specialist. You're you've got one of the you're like one of the people I see do the most uh, content about this, right? And that that brings you work, right? So you know, I, I never want to use specialist as a, as a sort of like uh, you know title. Uh, sure, sure, but, sure. Uh, certainly aficionado. Uh, I enjoy the conversation. I enjoy hearing about it. Uh, I mean, there are some speakers out there, or you know, some engineers, uh, some researchers uh, in, in the, the uh, sort of like images and the rendering scene that uh, they don't speak a lot, but when they do, I enjoy it. You know, I, I take time out of my day to make sure that I'm, I'm available mm-hmm. to see their talk, you know, like people like our Cor- Cornel Lezinski, he doesn't speak a lot, but I remember a couple of years ago when he was at Perf Now, I was like, 
you know, the minute the videos were available, I was right there watching it. Absolutely. So, so yes, you know, you tend to, I mean, you need to project what people want to see, right? So, uh, you know, if you're going to be a jerk, project that you're a jerk. You know? <laughs> yeah, you got to get that Gordon Ramsay energy going. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, but, you know, I, I start to read a lot about uh, web performance in general. You know, I start to attend the web performance meetup, which is uh, one of the meetups that I run now. Uh, and I just start to share some of the information, whatever I had. And I would follow, you know, a lot of the, uh, the leaders in that field. Uh, the, you know, they sh in turn shared some of their info. And it's just like, you know, more for me to ingest and, and, mm -hmm. and sort of like voraciously sort of uh, devour. So, um, but yeah, you know, it... it I, I, I'm a big believer that uh, whatever it is that you're into, you know, maybe you're a CSS person or you're getting into CSS, you know, share some of the CSS knowledge you have, share, mm -hmm. you know, some of the stuff that you're reading out there uh, and people then potentially ask you questions. You may or may not have the answer, but you start that conversation with them Absolutely. and they'll be like, oh yeah, that, that person, like, you know, I love that they, they share CSS or just a lot of front end stuff and, you know, I can ask them or, you know, I know I'll get like some nuggets from them at some point. Mm -hmm. So there's actually, there's a related question that I want to dig into. Scott uh, in the chat is asking, so when you're learning this stuff, mm -hmm. how do you show that you know what you're talking about? Like, especially in the context of, of going in and applying for jobs. I mean, uh, you can mention that in, in some of your, uh, you know, uh, in your resume or cover letter or something like that, or you may have, you know, a repo where you're sort of like playing around with some, some mm -hmm. content and, and you're showing some of the results, uh, or you may have like a code pen where you've sort of laid out these sort of code blocks, these examples mm -hmm. of, of you working on, on, on a particular item that, you know, was puzzling to you at first, but that you're like, okay, I kind of get it now, but you leave it there out in the open for the public to see and consume. Um, that's something that I'm very adamant about, which is uh, being public with your work. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying that you absolutely have to do it, but if you do, you'd be surprised because this is working on your behalf while you sleep. Right, right, right. Um, I mean, I wish I wish I pulled up the example. Um, and in fact, there's so many links I want to carry uh, for this uh, for this uh, talk, but. Like we'll we'll, we'll make sure they show up in the the notes on the video. So we'll we'll oh, we'll post some be, resources yeah. on the video for the replay. If for anybody Absolutely. who's watching now, or if you're watching uh, the replay later on, um, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, I could give you an example where I remember uh, someone had just mentioned that uh, they were looking for an internship. Um, you know, uh, they're going to be. This is last year, obviously. They're they're going to be free and whatnot. They're ready for the summer, and. Um, Oh man, why, what am I? Why am I forgetting his name? CEO of uh, Shopify. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. I Toby. also yes, Toby. Yes, he basically went to this person's GitHub, looked through it, came back and offered them to spot the job on the spot. You know, in a cool. tweet, he was like, "Hey, so and so, I just went through your GitHub. It looks great. I love what you did here. If you're trying to intern with us, I got you right now. This is mm -hmm. not HR. This is the CEO." Right. So um, I've always said you'd be surprised what can happen when you're public with your work, sharing some of that, some of that uh, stuff you're working on. I'll give you another example. A really good friend of mine, Hussein Jurde, who's over at Google right now, he used to be at this company in Toronto, and he had been working on, I think, uh, a PWA. Uh, I can't remember which one, but uh, Adios Mani got wind of it online and was looking through it and was like, Hey dude, like I'd love to work with you on this. And essentially they start to both work on this project. Uh, a few months later, position opened up over at Google and he asked this gentleman, my boy uh, Hussein to apply. Mm -hmm. And you know, the application process took place and he was able to join Google. So again, this is the idea of being public with your work, with, which yeah. will at least get you a look, and then you know things can go from there. Well, and and I love that whole idea, right? Because it, I'm I'm thinking through you know how how I've ended up working with some of the people that I work with, and mm -hmm. and sometimes it's because we we pull the resume out of the stack, but a lot of times it's because we have 
prior positive experiences with the people and we look for their resume in the stack. And Absolutely. that comes from anything that comes from somebody that every time we talk to them on Twitter, it makes us smile. Somebody who is always helpful in a community forum, somebody who is part of the communities that we run in, who is just always helpful and supportive and making people feel like, you know, they can do it. Um, and, and just somebody who you can see doing the work, like there are people who are early in their careers and I see them, they're writing articles, they're, they're sharing their works in progress. They've got those code pens. They're seeing what somebody brilliant, like, uh, like Cassie Evans will do this amazing SVG animation and they'll go and they'll fork it and they'll alter it. They'll, you know, like I saw somebody did this yesterday. Uh, Cassie was at Smashing Comp and she did a, an animation of the Smashing Cat and mm. somebody went and put a guitar on the cat, right? Just like forked that, added a guitar, and now the cat rocks out. And it's like, what a what a fun way to learn something, show that you've done it, and if you're consistent with that, right? And actually, this is probably the thing that is maybe the most important, and I'll let you talk about it because you and I have talked about this a lot, but mm -hmm. consistency, continuing to show up, like how big of a role has that played in, in your career? You know, uh, tremendous. I, and uh, I mean, before I get into that, I, I want to actually bring up another example uh, because uh, you said something that made me think of it. I was listening to a podcast, um, you know, this gentleman, uh, B. Dougie, um, mm -hmm. Jamstack Radio. Yeah. And if anyone wants to go and listen to the very last or the most recent one, I think it's episode 65 or 66, and someone who is at a boot camp right now, uh, prior to going to the boot camp, I'd been super curious uh, and I'd, you know, start to poke around. This actually, this gentleman came from music, in fact, uh, and he started to poke around. You know, uh, I think Python maybe, but he really got into development. And uh, at the same time, he was discovering, you know, the Jamstack. And I think he's been playing around with Redwood JS. Uh, and so at the same time, he was attending the boot camp, which is still mm -hmm. now, I believe. He had been in the Redwood JS Slack, sort of like having these conversations with them and, you know, talking about things he was, he was discovering uh, with the framework. And, you know, I'm listening to this thinking like the minute this gentleman has done his program, he's got work waiting for him. Yeah. Somewhere guaranteed. And, you know, as I was listening to him, I was like, this is brilliant because it was his early involvement, his early sort of public commitment to uh, to working with this, you know, this framework and trying to figure out how it worked, uh, best practices and whatnot. And just to hear him speak, I was like, well, you know, this guy's got a, this guy's got a job, you know, mm -hmm. certainly coming out. Uh, so I just want to mention that. So if anyone wants to go back and listen to that podcast, but getting back to your question, which was, remind me again. Uh, about consistency showing up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there are certain situations where you almost have no choice, but to show up. Uh, and, you know, I think that I've put myself in that position in a sense that, you know, as a freelancer, you have to poke around to see who's doing what, uh, who's writing what, uh, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the idea of, you know, as an organizer, uh, you're also looking for people who have interest in the field so that you're forced again to see uh, who's writing what, who's speaking where, what was the talk about. Uh, and this is all the information that you take in. So the only way you find these things out is, is, is if you show up. Absolutely. That's it. Um, and, you know, it, again, it's getting back to the music pick, right? You know, it can be at times you're like, oh man, I really want to stay home tonight. Right. You know, I don't want to go see this band because I've been out three days this week and I would rather chill. But you make it out, you'll be there for like half hour, 45, whatever, and do what you have to do and come back. I think it's a bit of the same, you know, yeah. in, in, in certain roles and not all, but certain roles, um, being out there, seeing who's talking about what, knowing who to reach out to in case you need uh, a particular question answered. Uh, a group of people may be able to answer that question for you. Uh, you know, joining some slacks and, you know, you don't even have to necessarily engage everyone, but mm -hmm. watch the conversation that's yeah. taking place. Uh, and a lot of times those are the nuggets. 
Absolutely. Well, and, and just to kind of, you know, to, to expand on that even a little bit more, something that I think is so interesting is like, you can, you can see when people consistently show up, they, they start to become part of a community instead of observers in a community. And, and one of the things that I've noticed is that like everything that I've done consistently is a thing that I now am able to do for work. Um, and, and so I think a little, I think of it a little bit like every time that I do work, even if it feels pointless, even if it feels like I like, it's not what I wanted to do, you know, like, as you said, I just want to stay home and chill. If I, if I show up and I do that work, that's a vote toward making that who I become. And I want to cast as many votes as I can toward the lifestyle that I want. I, I love being able to do this show. And the only reason that Quincy reached out to me that I'm on the free code camp channel right now is because I showed up twice a week for the last two years on Learn with Jason, right? And and yeah. that that was a vote for me being a video internet person, right? Um, but that's been true of all parts of my career with the you know the the development job now I have now at Nellify and and I I think that that just it, you know that it seems true for all of us, you know, and and it, like we talked about earlier, you don't just do development. You you are all over the map. You've got you know, you're running a meetup, you're running, you're, you're running like a, a clothing brand, you're running, uh, your, your freelance in, like your freelance consultancy, like all of that stuff is happening because you're showing up and doing that work. And you know what the, the, the pins and whatnot, that was just an opportunity to sort of, you know, uh, originally it was really, it's a mixture of two things, you know, my background in music and yeah, I used to listen to a lot of rap, whatever. Although, you know, my range was like all over the place. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I thought it, it would be a very interesting way of, of, you know, breaking the ice when beating people. Uh, and, you know, sort of like, you know, it's like a peace offering. It's like, Hey, what's up? I have these pins. I hope you like them, whatever. And people are just like, Oh my God, you know? And so that was like more fun than anything. But, you know, in terms of, you know, my my current sort of priorities, certainly, uh, you know, freelance development. And in fact, I told you, I thought, you know, when I discovered, you know, I had a greater understanding of what the Jamstack was, you know, I think I told you, I think I told uh, uh, Phil, I was like, I think this is going to be huge, you know, especially for freelancers. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also, you know, my parents are retired teachers. And, you know, when you're, when you're young coming up, you might look at your parents, you're like, yo, my parents are awesome, but I'm going to get some cooler work. <laughs> you know? And I was just like teaching, whatever. But, you know, with age, I, I, I start to realize how important uh, being a teacher was, uh, being a uh, sort of like a figure that people could potentially look up to. Mm -hmm. um, and that just took over. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where the, the sort of the, the fascination for meetups came from and, and being able to create a platform for people to come in and shine, you know, uh, to start their careers uh, potentially with, you know, a lightning talk and then, you know, move that to a more sort of substantial 30, 45 minute talk, whatever, and, and then letting that take them where, where it may go. And uh, just because I've seen it, uh, and I think it's an opportunity also to bring my flair to that meetup ecosystem. And, you know, it might not be the meetup that you're used to. Mm -hmm. You know, you roll in, the music will be different. Yeah. You roll in, the food might be different. Uh, the emceeing might be a bit, you know, have a bit more flavor. Well, and, uh, and you just did, like, to, to maybe paint a picture of this flavor a little bit, you just did a whole, like, themed eleven D event right uh, yeah, yeah like so what was november 11th so 11 11 you started it at what time was it 11 11 <laughs> 1 11 uh, <laughs> and it was on 11 e. but you know what it, it, again it's an opportunity to spin uh a very detailed development platform into something that could be a bit more interesting mm -hmm. uh just the theme alone and you know <clears throat> it's funny you should mention that and and i you know i'll, I'll shout out the speakers but they helped in putting together what was a super interesting in my eyes event more people got you know uh, even more interested uh, once they understood what was going on and they're like oh it's lightning talk okay cool 
And we ended up getting some of the, the, the best talks I've heard in, in quite a while in terms, for sure, as lightning talks, because everyone had a detailed uh, talk. Uh, there was a fantastic talk by uh, Dan Fascia on how he was li- using Eleventy in the medical profession. And I remember he had told me in the, the, the back channels that that's what he was, he was going to do. And I was just like, oh, I can't wait for this. You know, I'm not <laughs> belittling everyone else's talk. But this is the idea that people can discover new things, mm-hmm. even though they believe they're like, oh, I kind of know how 11 works and whatnot. But it was just like mind blowing. Yeah. Um, so I like to enable that sort of element, that sort of discovery element that needs to happen at every step. And and that's, you know, and that's what I think is is interesting. And and one of the reasons that that I, I love watching you work is that I can see you bringing the creativity from your your previous roles and trying to think about this stuff not as, well, it's a meetup, it's a tech meetup, mm-hmm. it has to work like this. And instead thinking of it as a, it's a, it's a gathering space. We're going to bring people together. And anytime people come together, it can be stiff and very formal and and kind of impersonal, or it can be wild, you know, like a a house party is just an informal meetup, right? So how can we play with the format? How can we make something that, that doesn't just feel like the thing we've always done, but something that feels unique, something that's remarkable. And I think that you have a unique talent for that. Um, and I, I would, I would wager, and, and you can confirm that this has played a pretty significant impact on on the connections you've been able to make and what that's been able to unlock for your career. Certainly, you know, and um, I, I agree two hundred percent with that. You know, and um, I'll, I'll give you a quick story. I remember uh, when I was first coming into the uh, the environment, the industry. And someone had said, you know, you need to attend meetups because, you know, you're going to see and learn a lot of stuff. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. And he had mentioned this one particular meetup to attend. Uh, They happened to be friends of his, but I was like, okay, whatever. And I walked in and I remember this like it was yesterday. I walked in, I looked around, it was packed. And I was like, okay, this is really interesting. And again, you know, you've had this hat on. I've worn it, obviously, you know, as people came from music, a full room to us is like gold, Mm -hmm. you know, because we've had those ones that were, you know, (laughs) very, you know, sparsely attended. Uh, But that's just because we think like so far ahead sometimes, you know, but I remember, you know, sitting down and listening to the meetup and watching all the speakers and watching the organizers sort of do their thing. And, you know, I paint a few of them. I'm like, guys, this is really good. But here are three things that I think could be improved. Bing, mm-hmm. bing, bing. And, you know, instead of just, you know, peanut gallery, you know, blah, blah, blah. This this could be improved and just walk away. I literally stepped to the organizers. I'm like, hey, gentlemen, you know, this is great. This is an amazing audience. But I think this could improve. And I immediately start to share some of my ideas. And, you know, they told me thereafter, I mean, later on, they're like, you know, when you came up, you know, and start to criticize us, but we're kind of like, hey, you know, here's some ideas. They're kind of like, who's this guy? You know, I ended up joining them Hmm. and I helped them sort of like develop, uh, you know, better ideas uh, and, and things that I thought could be interesting. Because again, you have to look at a particular topic and be like, okay, this is cool, but I think it would sound better if we said this, and then we can go out and get this type of, you know, uh, speaker. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I think there are so many opportunities in tech right now to do uh, really interesting things, despite the fact that we are pretty much online all the time now. Mm -hmm. Um, it, It just might take that extra glass of Prosecco to really let your mind wander and, and expand on this idea because I think, uh, you know, some of the best ideas are hiding in in, in, in sort of plain sight. Mm-hmm. You know, I think this uh, levity thing was just sitting right there. And uh, cause I remember I was reading something about levity and I'm like, wait, what's today's date? And I looked at my watch and I'm like, wait, November 11th is coming up. I'm like, levity is really buzzing. And I'm like, I know some levity developers. Okay. Let me reach out. I reached out to them. <laughs> And they're like, dude, this sounds pretty interesting. I'm like, all right, let's do it. And, you know, we did a broad daylight and it was awesome. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's so much fun, uh, like I've said, to, to watch you work. 
it because you you do bring that kind of fresh perspective you you do interesting things that don't follow the standard format um and it's you know it's it's one of the reasons that, that when i'm thinking of how do we put together something fun how do we put together something different you're one of the first people that comes to mind for that um oh, thank you and and i've i really love to see that so we're we're down coming down to the end here so let's make this a little more practical for the people watching right now absolutely um what what would you recommend both as as learning practices and as community practices like if somebody was going to adopt one or two habits today what should they start doing if they're trying to land that first gig i would say um okay so i believe there's a little bit more clutter right now and there are a lot of people trying to do the exact same thing you're doing, which is land a job. Um, I mean, this is a bit of a two-parter. So one prime, I'm going to one, sorry, I would say try not to stress it too much uh, because I think a lot of people are, you know, they consider themselves ready at some point. They're like, okay, where's the job? Where's the job? Where's the job? You know, how come I'm not getting any offers? Try not to sweat that too much. But more importantly, I think as you, you know, shop around, stay active. Uh, and, you know, to me, that's the biggest part. And mm. staying active might mean uh, something to one person and something else to, some, to, to another one. But, you know, if you do a lot of reading, uh, you know, blogs or, you know, you're looking at, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, tutorials and whatnot, just keep going and, and try to create this environment where people can see your work, whether you're sharing this on Twitter, you have a GitHub with, or you have like a code pen, you know, shout outs to, uh, Lintronics, Lynn, mm -hmm. Lynn and tonic. Lynn, Lynn. Yeah. Lynn, Lynn and tonic. Like her, her one div thing is bananas. Oh, it's so good. Know? Like, I don't know anything else about her, but I just know she's, you know, she's a gangster with the CSS. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So share your stuff online, you know, again, whether it be a, a code pen, Twitter or GitHub. And um, I, I would say that's like a bit of a priority for me. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, the resume this, the resume that. Yeah, that's totally cool. But, you know, we're lucky enough that in this space, at the very least, the work that's out there, that's public, that's half your resume. Mm -hmm. You know, people are going to be like, okay, they know what they're doing here. You well, know, they'll go, go ahead. Well, I was going to say for a lot of developers, like when, when you send in your resume, your resume is basically a, a list of links, right? Okay. And so you got to build that list. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, thereafter, it could be a, a few different things. Obviously, uh, you know, you'd be surprised what, you know, being part of a community might lead to. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means, you know, if you get to know some people and opportunities come up, these people might ring you down to be like, hey, uh, just sent you a little DM. Let me know when you're ready. I'd love to talk to you. Like, for example, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll shout you out in public for this. That time uh, I heard from Kraft. Uh, CMS. Oh yeah, and you know, it read like, "Hey, uh, I'm from Craft. Uh, Jason sent me here," and I was like, oh, "Okay," you know, and I I'm pretty sure I was like, "You, dude, good luck," you know, and uh, <laughs> thank you very much for that. But these these are the things that I'm talking about. You know, when opportunities come around, someone might know you and mm -hmm. say, "Hey, I, I think this is coming down the pipe," and uh, I, 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 you know. This, this this sort of like this is your lane you know let me yeah. know what you think you know I'd, I'd love to set this up um i mean in fact right before we got on uh, i was having this conversation with someone about potentially an opportunity uh, early next year so uh, i'm a big believer that you know being public with your work what you do um and then you know being involved with the community and you know it won't go zero to a hundred overnight but you'll see your network grow. And, and like you said, if, if you're that person that people just love to see work and, and, and they smile when you're around, it's like they're going to reach out to you as well. Absolutely. I, it's, that's played such a big factor in my career as well. You know, after, after I got, I, actually, you know what? Even when nobody knew who I was, the way I got my first job in tech 
is I went to the local coding meetup and I was in Montana, in Missoula, Montana. So this was 14 programmers. None of us wrote the same language. Like I was a PHP dev. There was one other PHP dev. Most of them were Java. Uh, we had, you know, it was like nobody was doing the same stuff, but we just get together because we were the only programmers in town. <laughs> and through that, we we became friends and I got referred to a job because they were a Java dev and they were looking for PHP and I was the PHP dev. So I got hooked up because I showed up to this meetup. Right. Yeah. And those those connections, they might feel like nothing, but they they start to form a fag fabric. And, you know, that that referral led to me giving my first presentation at a meetup, led to me giving my first conference talk, which led to more referrals. And all of that has been the snowball that that got me to here. And, Absolutely. you know, you, you made a really good point about like not stressing at first because everybody's looking for their first job and it takes a long time to get started. And it reminds me of a, I, I wish I could remember who said this, but there was a metaphor that I heard, which is starting a career is like rolling a boulder. It is really, really, really hard to get it mm -hmm. to move that first inch. Yep. But as soon as it starts to move, it picks up momentum. And after a while, you can't stop it. You're just moving. And yep. so you gotta, you gotta stick with it. You gotta show up and do that work every day to get that first inch. Um, yep. cause it'll feel like nothing's happening and then it'll all happen at once. Oh, um, totally. But so Henri, man, thank you so, so much for hanging out with us. This has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, any final words for folks before we wrap this up? Oh man, you know what? Um, just, you know, wake up and, 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 you know, smile. You know, it's uh, I think there are a bunch of reasons, especially now to to sort of like be bummed out. But I think uh, there's been literally no better time to to sort of like show your wares um, and and be part of a community. I mean, and you had mentioned the thing about speaking uh, opportunities, and that's something that I'm going to work on in 2021 for for uh, all uh, devs out there, because mm -hmm. um once upon a time, you know, you could be in Toronto and not speak at the San Francisco meetup, but you can now, Yep. you know, so uh, you literally have, uh, for anyone looking, I think the opportunities have never been better to, to, to speak. And as you said, and I'll, I'll test as well, I think uh, from a lightning talk to a full talk, I think speaking can do wonders for your career as well. Absolutely. So Henri, where should people go if they want to keep up with you? What, uh, what links would you recommend? Honestly, I'm a big believer of, uh, of Twitter. Uh, so Henri Helvetica, uh, I, I'm usually pretty quick on the, on the, uh, the, uh, requests, you know, any DMS, my DMS are open. So if you have mm -hmm. questions, I'm always happy to do that. Uh, I've spoken to people from anything from, you know, dev to like running, you know, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take on, uh, any questions you may have. Excellent. So Twitter's it. Twitter. Yeah. And, and it's a great follow. Uh, Henri is full of excellent information on Twitter and that's going to be it for us today. So, uh, thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. This is a series. We're going to be doing these every Friday. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes glued to the free code camp Twitter. You can follow me at Jay Langsdorf on Twitter. And if you're into live coding, I also run a show called learn with Jason on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can find that at learnwithjason.dev. And Until a next time. Fantastic show that is, by the way. <laughs> I've said it before, I'll say it again. Thank Phenomenal you so much. Uh, so yeah, it's it's been an absolute pleasure hanging out with you all, and we will see you next time. <laughs>